Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa Hagen and I am an artist living in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, my background is Woodland Cree and Norwegian and I'm a member of the Lac Grange Indian Band. Um, I've been painting for probably 20 years or something now um, and I have been beading for oh maybe 12 years. Um, growing up uh, we kind of went you know, we lived in Saskatoon and we traveled up north to Sucker River and we traveled down south to Swift Current where my grand, my dad's parents lived for um, a few years. And uh, we did a lot of long driving on kind of boring stretches of road. And um, I was reflecting on, on whether or not I would have even developed this creativity to create art if it weren't for these kind of long swaths of uninterrupted time um, in my imagination and you know the boredom that we experienced as kids I think um, really were crucial to developing my ability to see light and color and shape and shadow um, I was doing a meditation yesterday a guided meditation and it was um, asking you to reflect on things that you love and you know aside from the obvious like family and husband and kids and everything I, I was thinking like I really love color like I love color and I love uh, shape and shadow and I love the way light has such subtle nuances and can just affect and change everything um, so I, I was thinking about that and kind of like you know being grateful for boredom and, and being raised before like internet fully exploded in our lives um i don't i just don't know that i would be the same you know creative person that i am today if i had been bombarded with constant ability to uh, distract myself all the time so that's kind of a neat thing um and i hope that i'm able to impart to my own children um you know the the need for space a space away from you know computers and screens and and all that so but the neat thing is i i get to stay connected to people during the pandemic even though um, because of screens rather so that's it's a double-edged sword and there's a little bit of both that is necessary right now i think um so Growing up, uh, we spent a lot of time in Sucker River, um, lots of time in the summers and stuff. And as I was saying, I spent a lot of time just looking and observing. And um, I, I think that that's really um, who I am as an artist, someone who I'm pretty quiet naturally. Like I, I, I'm not the life of the party or, um, you know, I like, I like chatting and I like visiting, but, um, I'm quieter naturally. So, uh, art for me really is my voice in, in a lot of ways. Um, my cookum was a wonderful beater. I used to watch her bead all the time. Um, if she wasn't sitting there beating, she was, you know, working on a crossword puzzle or she was, um, working on a jigsaw puzzle. And, um, I think that, her, her presence and sitting quietly, um, working on, on pieces all the time is, is a huge influence on me now. Um, I, I paint up here in my studio, but I bead downstairs at my kitchen table. I really like to be around my family when I'm beading and I, I like them to, uh, see what I'm working on. And I feel like when you're beading, it creates a nice grounded, quiet, space and people to settle into what they're doing and and uh so that's i've got a big mess of beads on my kitchen table and i'll give a little demonstration at the end of uh my talk here so um and my other big influence i think was my cousin joni she uh she's a painter and when i was little and go to her house and see these big beautiful paintings all over it just seemed so inspiring and um, 
kind of glamorous in a way, which is funny because I don't really think being an artist is very glamorous uh, now that I'm in it, but um, I'm grateful for her and her, her kind of zany, you know, uh, pushing for creativity and her energy. And I, I remember one time specifically when I was probably in grade two and I was working diligently at a paint by number. Um, and I, I don't know how much time I spent on it. I was probably halfway done the, the top part of a tree. And she came over to me and she's like, that's not how you paint. You know, you, you don't worry about the lines and the prescribed colors. You just got to feel it. She grabbed my brush and she dipped it in some different greens and she kind of scribbled all over the top of the tree. And I was just mortified. I couldn't believe she had done that. Um, and I'm so mad and I can't even remember what on earth I did with that painting if I finished it, if I threw it out, who knows, but it's kind of funny because um, when I've been stuck on a painting uh, or feeling like it's just not quite working, I kind of go back to that moment and um, think about, you know, something's not working here, like I'm constraining myself or I, I may be like being too timid in my approach to it. And so, and so that moment back, you know, however many years ago is, uh, is an important part of my memory and for my, my ability to challenge myself. Uh, I had a prof too, a painting professor who said like, don't ever be too precious about a painting. And this can go for any piece of work that you're, you're approaching really, if you feel like it's just not, coming together in a way you have to be able to be brave enough to kind of rethink the whole piece maybe maybe you have to take a big part of the painting out and start over um and and so that's it's a challenge right because you're you've spent all this time on something um and maybe you think like but I'm so close to being done uh but I think it's really important and so I, I you know grateful to Joni for her her challenging me to, to just push myself and to uh, be brave. And um, so, yeah, my Cookham and, and my cousin Joni were, were big influences um, on, on the way that I approach art and, um, and for very different reasons. Uh, with beading, I, I really wanted to start beading because of that memory of my Cookham beading all the time. Um, I just thought it was such a, a patient, beautiful art. And uh, so I, I took a course with my mom and my daughter at GDI um, a long time ago and learned how to bead and I've been um, having that element to my practice ever since. This year has been particularly important for that, I think, um, in that, you know, the pandemic has just been kind of a whirlwind of uncertainty and um, when you're beating, you're just very focused on what you're doing, what's in front of you. Um, and there's no real background noise. Like you can really just push all that other stuff aside and just be really present in the moment. Um, in a way that I, I've never really found in any, well, I guess baking is kind of like that for me too. Um, but you know, this year it, it's been a, a big, big part of my practice, um, more so than painting. Um, the nice thing about beading is it's small, it's compact until you start collecting a whole bunch of beads, of course, but you can kind of take it with you anywhere. And and I have, a, you know, I beat in the car and beat on the highway when my husband's driving. And, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a really crucial meditative thing for me. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really, I'm grateful for that. Hey guys, again, um, I got cut off abruptly upstairs um, because my phone was actually full but I wanted to give you a quick demonstration on a two needle beading method so um, I do both one and two needle beading and uh, for two needle 
you have a lead thread that is double double thread on your lead needle and then you have your second thread with a tail that's just loose I don't know if you can see this so there's no knot on one side and that will be your uh, thread for tacking down so I have my little drawing here on my hide and I'm just going to pick up some beads. Um, when I bead onto hide, I tend to just kind of sketch out what my plan is and then I select my colors as I go. Um, there's no one way of beading, there's just as many ways of beading as there is any other art making, I'm sure. So uh, I'm going to try and bring my camera up here. I've got my double threaded needle with probably a 10 or so beads and I'm just going to kind of hold them in place. I'm not going to tug them hard or anything. And then with my other needle, I'm going to come up beside the beads and in between the beads, I'm going to bring my needle up. And then I'm going to go back down on the other side of the bead. So what essentially what I'm doing here is um, sewing down the thread between each bead. So I'll just keep working my way down the line. It's a little bit tough when you're working with um, hide so you have to push your needle a little bit more than say um, Pellon which is like a stiffened felt your needle goes through much easier on Pellon and then you just keep going um, this technique is really simple the thing that you have to think about once you've kind of learned how to apply the beads um, in an applique style like this is just tension, getting your tension right, um, selecting your colors. This is actually, I'm going to already be tearing this out because even the way that you layer beads can affect um, the way that your image comes out. So I started this area here all in one one row, but I'm actually going to take it out and then outline instead and then fill. And so there's just different things to think about um, when you're deciding how to approach your, your subject. Anyway, that's a super, super quick um, tutorial. It was nice talking to you guys. Hope you all take care. Bye-bye.